Ready, Jay? All right, you want to give me that? Okay. We are on. Back here again, the It's all about sports broadcasting network for the Canada Showcase game. It's number two in the Larry Starter Tim Hayes. You think which one? Rod Fitz. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Right, Cocos Valley, they'll take on Haddonfield, the uh, the second of four games here today. And, uh, we'll start with uh, we'll start with him, Rod Fitch. Right, Cocos Valley at Haddonfield, two very good uh, programs. Haddonfield coming in at uh, total at 21 and four, and Right Cocos coming in at 15 and nine. Rod, what do you like about uh, what do you look for in this matchup? I just look for two well-coached teams, two teams that are always state perennial powerhouses. Uh, it's going to, I think an early start is going to be big. I, I really do, because these teams know each other really well. They're going to get off to a good start. You're, this is a, a neutral site, so you're not sure about the rims. I mean, I know they both played Camden. Uh, I know they're used to that, but I think a good start is really important. There are two very good guards in this matchup now. Ray Cocosalli had that, but unfortunately that person's gone. That would be uh, Adam Perry. He graduated a season ago. He was not only one of the top, he was the top scorer. Ray Cocosalli had among the top players in the entire state of New Jersey. Yes. And we really enjoyed watching him play. That has changed, and really it just seems like the new era begins. And I think it's Asa Daniels is really the guy. But on the other end, Hadfield is led by the talented sophomore, Mikey DePersia. When he gets hot, he is tough to bring down. Mikey DePersia can shoot the long ball. We know he can. We know he is a three-point type specialist. What do you look for in him, in him today? But you know uh, what? Ron? Yeah, he's a good shooter. Hadfield has a history of good shooters. You remember the years they had Zubek in 2007, eight years. And they had shooters around uh, Zubek, the big guy, when they had when they were going back to back state championships. Uh, so they always had good shooters. So it's going to be interesting to see how Rancaco's Valley can take away the airspace from these shooters. All right, let's bring in our third member of the uh, broadcast here today for the Right Cocos Valley and uh, Haddonfield matchup, Terry Collins. Terry, you are a again Woodbury native. What can you tell us about these two teams here today, and what makes this for a fitting matchup? Well, as Ron mentioned earlier, Haddonfield's always been a well-coached team. Um, even if you have um, an advantage over them with talent, uh, their coaching usually uh, makes up for that. So, you know, I look to see a very close game, um, you know, between two teams that have some pretty good history as uh, um, basketball. And as we know, Haddonfield right now is, you know, one of the top teams in that uh, Colonial Conference. Well said, Terry. Let's look at the starting lineups for today for the Haddonfield Bulldogs. Mike Tepersia, Lewis Evans, Will Bond, Dylan Hyde, and Brendan Gilbart. Paul Wiedemann is the head coach, is assisted, by the way, good buddy of mine. Uh, I, should, uh, I like to refer to him as Mr. Stafford, by the way. Uh, he is, of course, the father of the former Pittman great, Eric Stafford, who's done good things over at Lafayette College under the great direction of Fran O'Hanlon. For Ryan Cocoselli, Asa Daniels, Javon Laster, Katie Dawkins, Kanayo Akosa, and uh, Curtis Bright, Jay Flanagan. Always uh, a well-respected coach, always with good type of uh, talent as we are underway. The official short of night's game, George Golding, Jordan Albin, and Rod Green. So it'll be a jump ball, and... <coughs> The Haddens, the Bulldogs of Haddonfield will get will get possession here. De Persia again moves the ball back out again to Hyde. Hyde dumping it back to Evans. Evans goes to Gilmartin. Gilmartin back out again. Do they go inside? No, and about it goes. And I think it's going to stay Haddonfield basketball again. Haddonfield trying to work in the inside, or should say down low early. Um, Rod, they've got to try to find a way to, uh, I guess, go after this right Cocos team that mostly consists of guards. This is like a four-guard set here. Yeah, a lot of high school teams are like that nowadays. Big three-point basket for Will Bond, the 6'4 junior. Number 10, Will Bond. The Persia is really the name to keep an eye out on because we see him a lot during the AAU season. Basket Two, answer by Kurt Bright. Curtis Bright. The big name that's not playing this uh, season, I'm told, is Brandon Boggs. Now, he was a big uh, impact last year alongside uh, Adam Perry for Coach Jay Flanagan. I'm told by the, uh, I guess you could say, the uh, managers of the Rancocas Valley that Boggs is also a star in track and field. Wow. 
to Persia. There's that three-pointer that we're looking for. Three-pointer, number three. What, where do you think that, what do you think Mike DePersia can do here, Rod? Can well, you play Division think, two or Division three? How, how much You know how what much it is? You know it like it comes down to height. So you might be a really good Division two uh, because he's a good shooter. Height is really important because there's a lot of guys that are his talent, but they're taller, and he would have trouble in, in Division one. Uh, but Division two, he, he, you know, maybe he could light it up. Well, here come the uh, Bulldogs once again. Off the hands of Bond, out of bounds it goes, and it will be right Cocos Valley basketball. By the way, if you are interested again in high school basketball, our final uh, team of, or I should say, event of the season, the President's Day Shootout, will be February 20th this Monday at Del Castle High School in Wilmington, Delaware. We'll have a girls' game, uh, North Carolina Prep and Paul the sixth. St. Thomas Moore will take on Lindenwald. Howard High School will take on Parkway Center City. And the host, Del Castle, will take on West uh, Hampton Tech. So if you're not doing anything again uh, this coming President's Day, uh, we hope you'll join us at uh, w in Wilmington, Delaware at Del Castle High School. Mm. Here's to Persia, that long three-pointer once again. And I see him a lot during AAU season. This is a guy who never met a shot that he did not like. <laughs> and Paul Weedman certainly sees quite a, a lot in his sophomore sensation. Again, right, Cocos Valley is always a team that has loved to shoot the three-pointer. Jay Flanagan has certainly preached on shooting out of his team all these years. Back of the hands again of Hyde. Hyde, good pump fake, but a traveling violation called on Lewis Evans. Again, another bad turnover. Weedman not happy with the call. He just, I guess he saw a, a step, but I no, guess. No, I thought he traveled. I see this as a uh, pretty young Haddonfield team also. Uh, actually only having one senior on their roster and uh, several sophomores in it looks like. So. But Terry, we've seen this, uh, but we saw this in the first game with Paul the Six and Paulsboro. And two teams played very sloppy in the first quarter of play. Yep. And then and then Paulsboro really did get it going with the nine points in a row. Again, a great uh, effort, by the way, uh, by Paul the Six. A much needed victory for them. They've now won five in a row with a 21-point come from behind victory. Big basket, by the way, by Kanayo Akoso, the talented senior. He's a returning player for Coach Jay Flanagan. I think the big loss has to be Adam Perry. Again, averaged about 15 points and close to 10 assists per game, if not more. But he was definitely the uh, piece, or should say the keys, for Jay Flanagan's uh, car. Oh, definitely, and, and I'm going to tell you, now, how often did you see Adam Perry play, uh, Rod? I have yet to see him. I, I was very surprised because I'm told that Adam Perry is not in college. He's actually at a fifth-year school. Wow. Now, I think it was at some school in Kansas City. I could be wrong. It might have been Sunrise Christian Academy, the legendary, uh, the legendary program that takes fifth-year seniors. It's not going to count again. Offensive foul. It's going to be called on Curtis Bright. That was a good step through. He, he got there in time. Jay Flanagan not happy with the uh, call. The and I'll tell you what, I have to agree with head coach Jay Flanagan. Well, you Flanagan. know what it was? He was under the basket yes, in high school. That's a that's usually a charge, but in college, that's the dotted Three line. That would have been an and one. You have to get positioning. And I don't think, uh, I think Bright, that basket should have counted, though. But you agree that that should have been uh, a I basket. thought he had got there in time. It was close, though. It was, it was close. Well, it was definitely close to call. Six to four again, headed field again on top of right Cocos Valley. It's been definitely an exciting second game after a thrilling first game between Paul Sparrow and Paul the Six. Foul call. Number one. Lock, lock, lock. You know yo, Ocasio. Foul on Canayo Ocasio. That's it, number 34. Dylan that one good again, this one by Dylan Hyde. 6'4", sophomore. Terry, you made this uh, perfectly clear. An average age of about 15 to 16-year-old players here on this uh, Bulldog team. So there's definitely a good future for Coach Paul Weedman. Right, they have uh, three sophomores, a junior, and a senior in this starting lineup. They're taking quite advantage of this youth as Gilmartin found from behind. He'll shoot two here with 3.07 again remaining. Follows on Gilmartin. Acoso. Canayo Acoso with that personal foul, and uh, I think that's going to be his second. We'll find out. Meanwhile, Rancocas 
Meanwhile, Rancocas Valley is set to get two subs in. That's going to be number 22, Darnell St. Clair, and number 24, Nair Campbell. The pace is not as fast as the first game. The pace is not oh, as yes. fast as the first but game. But I think that Brandon Boggs is a big loss again, as mentioned, for uh, yeah, you Flanagan. It's hard Bunch, to lose star Boggs players. Was, well, Boggs was always somebody that had the good court eye type of vision. Mm. He made... Because we've, I've seen uh, Boggs play in the fall basketball league at in Haddonfield and Paul the sixth, and he did make that team a lot better. Mm. Even though Adam Perry was the best player on the floor, okay. Brandon Boggs was the guy that could give you the double, double, double every single night, and you could understand why with his speed of track. So he's expected to get a full ride on a track scholarship. Okay. Foul called on Bond. I believe that's going to be a personal number one. So that's the first foul here in the first half of play for the Bulldogs. A fast-paced game again, as mentioned, on both sides. Limited amount of scoring again yes. as the score eight to four. Haddonfield again is on top of the Clarence Turner Gymnasium. Everybody will leave the gym as soon as this game again is over. We'll have about close to an hour break before the lights come on. And the matchup everybody I think really has been waiting for. Nair Campbell. Although I gotta credit the Paul's World Paul Six. This is a great way to start off yes, to open up for nationally ranked St. Anthony and Camden. Yes. Two of the top programs in the north and south of Jersey. This is what fans again in New Jersey certainly come here to see. Definitely. And, and you know what? This game may heat up. If you may, you know, they both teams are filling each other out. So you make of this as like a, a good way to kick it off for St. Anthony yeah. and, uh, and Camden in the next yeah. game. But right now, good prelude to it. But right now, both of these teams have got us. Both these right now, both these teams just trying to get that first shot. That one will not go off the miss once again by Hyde. Right, Cocos again, as mentioned, trying to get something going here with under 90 seconds again remaining here in the first quarter of play. Not the best of shot attempted by Curtis Bright. I don't think Jay Flanagan was all that happy oh, that I Bright took that either. shot. You could see it in his eye. We're actually looking nice right at move. it. What nice a move by the Persia. And again, when he gets going, he can be the toughest guard to stop in the state of New Jersey. He's showing why with a five-point performance. And can you imagine how uh, good those three sophomores are going to be in uh, another two mm. years after having three years of varsity play mm. together? Mm. And this team, again, as mentioned, like you said, as young a team as they are, when they all become seniors, this Haddonfield team could be a lot tougher than they are. It's amazing as a sophomore class, this team has won 21 games for Coach Paul Weedman. Three-point three basket three scored by... I think that basket was scored by... That uh, Nayar Campbell. Nayar Campbell. Nayar Campbell. So back to back baskets again for Nayar Campbell. And the score 10 to 9, 29.6 seconds again remaining. Here are the first quarter of play. Right Cocos Valley and Haddon Field High School. Good backdoor cut again. Curtis Bright had an opportunity to lay that in. Unfortunately, just could not get that lay in. Now, uh, we'll stay. It was last touched by the Bulldogs, so the Red Devils of Wright Cocos Valley will have an opportunity here to try to take the lead once again. Back and forth type of battle here in this second game. Again, Paul the Sixth defeats Paulsboro. 21 down and have well won their last five games. Paulsboro has dropped four in a row. The defending four-time Group 1 SJ's champions. Good ball movement again by the Red Devils. Still have an opportunity here. Even if the basket goes, it's not going to count for Javon Laster. Now, Ranko Casale moving the ball, but unfortunately, they come away with nothing. And at the end of one, it's a 10-9 score in favor of the Haddonfield Bulldogs as we are getting set to go for the Camden and St. Anthony matchup at the Camden Showcase. We've already had one clash here today. Paul the six, a 21 point, come from behind win. Down 21 points over Fallsboro. Again, back with the second quarter right after this on the It's All About Sports Broadcast Network. Line access fee, administrative fees, there are even taxes on top of them. Decent people shouldn't have to live like this. 
Did I get it? T-Mobile ends surprise fees and taxes. That's right. With T-Mobile One, taxes and fees are now included. Four lines, 40 bucks each. All unlimited, all in. Learn more at a T-Mobile store. Oh, okay. No, I know that. Ready? We're here at the cat. Here at the Camden Showcase for the It's All Out Sports Broadcasting Network, the Clarence Turner Gymnasium, Jacob Schwartz, Ron Finch, Terry Collins joining us here today. Gentlemen, great, but I guess you could, great maybe is not the word I, I guess I could have used. Sluggish first quarter on both sides of the basketball. Gentlemen, what do you make of this? Right. Well, we've seen Paulsburg in that first game put up 21 points in the first quarter. Here we have 19 combined by both teams in the first quarter. So definitely two different, different games. I, I like Mike DePersia. He's a good player. I, this is my first time yes. seeing him. And I tried to tell you this, Ron, that Mike DePersia is a guy that I see year-round. He's a very good outside type of shooter, a talented, a very underrated type of sophomore. And keep in mind, coach, uh, you know, one of the many assistant coaches of Red Cocos include Brian Stafford. Now, Brian's son, Eric Stafford, was a star basketball player as the basket scored by Curtis Bright. But Brian's son, Eric Stafford, is now a, is now a uh, star player for Fred O'Hanlon at Lafayette. He was a great impact over at Pittman, played with the Jersey Shore Warriors. In fact, a Persia, I believe, has played a few years with the Jersey Shore Warriors, so you always know that any time nice you come out of a, school or a program like Jersey Shore Warriors, you can make an impact right away. Basket, by the way, is good. See, you know what I like about the Persia. As that foul's going on, Nair Campbell, score the basket for DePersia. He Ron. moves out the basketball really good. And not only is he a good score, he just crafty. But just like you said, Rod, that's the basket. That's, again, the baskets that you need. Actually, Mike DePersia, by the way, is not on, and I, I correct myself on this, Mike DePersia plays for the AAU's Team Speed. In fact, Team Speed's coach here in the stand spoke to him before the start of this game. And DePersia certainly brings the speed in the AAU Team Speed. Good backdoor cut as Kadion Dawkins with his first two points. Tied at 13 with under a minute again left gone by here in this first half. This is good basketball here yes, in South is. Jersey. Yes, it is. I think we're definitely impressed with the speed once again. We're seeing this here in the second game, like we saw with Paulsboro and Paul the Sixth. Here's to Persia again. To Persia in trouble. Finds his man. To Ben Schroeder. To Persia again, guarded well by Ray Cocos Valley's number 21, Curtis Bright. To Persia in a little bit of trouble here. The team speed AAU basketball player. Dumping it back again, dumping it inside. Good pass and inside. The back door cut that again. was well done, the way they sealed off the, the smaller defender and, and was able to lob it over the top. That was really well done by the coaching staff. That was a good set play. And Sam Hyde was wide open in the, in the back door cut. I don't know why somebody from RV just bit off, and that allowed Hyde to just drive the lane. He was able to get fouled. He's going to line here for two shots here. Well, great patience on having this part. They didn't rush anything. I think the person had a look earlier, but he kind of waited. And like you said, a uh, good uh, backdoor cut down low. That was a perfect pass. You don't get better passes, I guess, than that for the for one half of the Hyde brothers. Hyde to the line again, and he switches to Hyde, a 6'4 junior who comes in weighing 220 pounds, at least according to Max Prep. And his brother, Dylan Hyde, is actually a sophomore. In fact, Sam is the older one. And that basket good for Javon Lester. Or at least, I believe he's being pronounced Javon Lester. His first three-pointer. And the pace is picking up a little bit. Mm -hmm. These teams are starting to score more, so. Absol absolutely, we're seeing a lot more scoring here in this one. And I think, like you said earlier, both teams are kind of just filling each other out in that first quarter now. He's kind of uh, ready to go and well, kick things. Well, Kyle Sapp has just checked back into the court, has checked into the ball game for the first time. If you want to talk about good guard type of play, how big would it have been in the next game coming up? Excuse me for Camden and St. Anthony. Camden will be missing its top one of its top guards, Corey Greer, a torn ACL. Mm. His high school career is over. Could he have been a big uh, Rod? Do you think he could have been a big impact today against a tough defense? You need all you can get against St. Anthony's. 
Yeah, their St. Anthony's defense is sick. That's how good they are. And, and you need all the scoring power you can get when you're playing uh, the Friars. Well, we'll talk about that again as the game gets closer. But meanwhile, Rank Cocos Valley again. This game is a one-point lead. Rank Cocos Valley again, as mentioned, on top. As Jay Flanagan telling his team, you can hear him in the background, yeah. telling his team to be patient. It seems like they're just they're trying to force a well, shot. You know what we it saw is? this in the first Had, game. Hadfield has Hein, who's, who's a big, Go. tall Go. forward. He's 6'4", Go. up top Go. on the pressure instead of in the back. And he's using his length to give the – they're having a hard time throwing the ball over the top. And, and Rank Cocos Valley, again, as mentioned, has to try to adjust, like you said, with these with these bigs. As young a team as they are, don't let that uh, youth fool you. Height is height. I've always told people that. Back to back well, fouls on the uh, Bulldogs. What, what they're doing that's unusual is they have, instead of the bigs underneath, they have their big man up top as a, as a pressure valve to, to use his length, and that's given uh, Rakakos Valley some trouble. And the, and the Bulldogs again committing back to back fouls. So now they're one foul away. I should say they're two fouls away from being in the penalty. Mike DePersia with the last, with the first foul, and then the last foul I believe was uh, called. Well, I actually would like to find out. Well, we'll find out who that last foul was on in a few moments. Meanwhile, we're three minutes in to the second quarter of a 16 to 15 game. Jacob Schwartz, the It's All About Sports Broadcast Network from the Clarence Turner Gym at Camden High School, home to the two. South Jersey all-time league scores. Anita Payton, Annie Payton, excuse me. I don't know why I keep calling her Anita. Annie Payton and the great Dewan Wagner. Basket good for Nair Campbell. Off the bench, Rod Finch. Nair Campbell with seven points, and he has made a big splash for Kentucky. Yes, Kentucky he has. Wagner. He's able to break through this zone and score. We're looking forward to seeing more of this Rancocas Valley team down the road. This is a team, again, as mentioned, that always makes noise in states. Mm. Three-pointer good again good as shot. big shot for the Bulldogs as Barry Beeler answers right back with his first three. Terry, you couldn't have said it any better. You could not have asked for a better shot like that. And they need that because, like you said, uh, Rancocas Valley has kind of matched their intensity now, so you can kind of feel it, the energy. Well, the Red Devils again are looking to answer here as we are tied again at 18. Another close matchup again here at the Camden Showcase. Unfortunately, in the first half of the last game between Paulsboro and Paul the Sixth, it was a 21-point lead. It was all Paulsboro on the strength of Eric nice Diaz. And you know, Jay, is good. you don't want to get in a three-point shooting contest with Haddonfield. That's what Rackackles Valley is doing so far, and they're going to, they're going to be in a short end to that one. Well, Beeler with back-to-back -back baskets. It almost looked like identical shots from the opposite end of that three-point line. That's the tackling violation. we but not happy after another, yet another turnover. And as I our, actually didn't understand that at all, why he's arguing it's Haddonfield basketball, but I guess he was looking for a whistle. And it didn't seem like he was going to get one. The version gets it back. You know, he loves to shoot the three. He's got the shot. It's no good. The rebound again secured. The Bulldogs again with another opportunity with under three minutes again remaining. Back out again from the corner. Three-pointer. That one no good. But look who's there. It's Barry Beeler doing it again. You know what, that's, a, that's a product of good spacing. That's why he was able to oh, get Beeler that. Beeler had absolutely rebound. wide open spacing on that. Somebody from Ranko Casale has got to do a better job boxing out. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, you can't stand there waiting for the ball. They got to go up and get it off the glass. Well, that was exactly a perfect example of that's what happens when you get those second chance efforts, and that's what it seems like the Bulldogs are able to do, and they did that just that. That was a perfect opportunity, just a perfect example of what good second chance points are all about. Big three pointer as the Red Devils continue to answer back. Javon Laster. It does seem like every time that the uh, Bulldogs get close. The Red Devils find ways to answer back. 22-21, the Bulldogs answer. 30-second timeout called by head coach Paul Weedman and the Haddonfield Bulldogs. I think we're going to stay right here on the air. Uh, Terry Collins, you're holding a sheet. Would you like to tell us exactly what that is in your hands? I'm sitting here looking at uh, some of the South Jersey matchups next week. Um, I see where actually Haddonfield is the number two seed, and they'll be playing Manchester Township in the first round. 
um, where also Camden is the number one seed in that same bracket. So I'm sitting there trying to picture in my mind a Camden versus Haddonfield, you know, match up what that would be with the Persia versus, you know, some of the strength and toughness of Camden. Mm. You know, well, um, since Corey Greer tore his uh, ACL at the beginning of the season, things have really changed for head coach John But, but now Camden's has some big wins. But Same, they always yeah. find ways to win because, again, they have a lot of weapons. Ethan Tarde and, uh, you know, Daquan Williams and, and even Miles Thompson, who's mm. considered one of the top juniors in the state of New Jersey. Yeah, they've had some big wins. Uh, Sean well, A. We'll, and, and, and we'll, you'll get a chance, folks, St. to see Camden as they're up next against the longtime Hall of Fame coach Bob Hurley and the St. Anthony Friars. We'll have that coverage for you right here on the It's All About Sports the Broadcasting the Traveling Violation. It'll be right Cocos It'll be RV Basketball. Another big defensive uh, pressure. Now, as a lot of people are saying, that Camden went to the Group 2 or since I believe the Group 2 championship one year ago and have have lost not one, but two consecutive years under head coach John Malore. They want to get over the hump again, as mentioned. And Terry, how can Camden do that um, with the talent they have? Again, they will lose their biggest name in Corey Green. How can Camden overcome the odds and win for head coach John Malore? Well, I mean, Camden always has a next man up mentality, so they're always looking to... You know, when great players are missing, then they have other players who uh, step up into a great role. So, you know, today, I'm sure they're going to answer the call uh, to be an underdog to the St. Anthony's team. Uh, they're coming off of a, a tough loss the other day, but they also have close in their mind that they just beat the number one team in South Jersey in yeah. St. Augustine. That is so, true. You know, they can't look at that as motivation. Absolutely. And, and, uh, about a week ago at Paul the Six, which was, by the way, hosted – by the It's All About Sports Network as Camden winning in a one-point game over St. Augustine. And that was and, an overtime. And it was not, not, not to mention the fact that it was an overtime game. For oh right, Cocos Valley. It's 23 to 22. I think he has some special play coming out of his timeout. The Persia shot will not fall. Rebound again secured. It's a fight for the ball. And it looks like we're going to have no foul. It's going to be out of bounds. Red, 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 red. It'll belong to Haddonfield with under a minute. With under a minute again remaining here in the first half of play. Again, it's to Persia. That mm. shot won't fall. To Persia again wide open in the corner. Thank goodness for Red Cocos Valley. That shot does not but, fall. But you know again, what though? Persia I thought they did a pretty it. good job of closing out on this three to make it work a little bit on that shot. Here comes here come the Red Devils again with an opportunity as they lead by one. And if you're Jay Flanagan, you've got to go for the last shot here. You don't necessarily need mm -mm. a quick basket here. This is smart basketball here. This is how it's supposed to be done. Go for the last shot. And Jay Flanagan, you hear in the background calling for the last shot here. Here's the defensive pressure again, as mentioned. Remember, when a team uh, defends, you can call for a five-second violation. Back out again from the corner at the buzzer. Shot won't go. Last second opportunity. Yes, it's good as Kyle Sapp beats the buzzer with his first field goal. Again, RV had an opportunity for a three, but Kyle Sapp again. This is what we're talking about here with these second chance points. It goes on the one end of Hadfield, and RV answers right back. The basket's gonna count. Right, Cocos Valley goes into the locker room with a 25 to 22 lead. As our leading scorer again for the night is Nair Campbell off the bench with seven points. Truck Money and Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Spirit has over 400 vehicles to choose from and 70 trucks on the ground ready to roll today. Drive home a new 2017 Ram 1500 quad cab for as low as $149 per month. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram will get you driving today. Rates start at 0% with terms up to 84 months. For over 25 years, the Delaware Valley's smartest shoppers have been saving thousands on their new vehicle with the Spirit Saver price. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is right off I-95 with the base of the Commodore Barry Bridge. You're only minutes away. Online 24-7 at SpiritChryslerDodgeJeep.com. Spirit, we're selling excitement. Spirit. Cut no pity, cut no flat. 
Castle on the hill, the high, a school, a haven, a home, a family. For four years, it was my home, my family. I take great pride in saying that I came out of the high. Over the last 100 years, it's been home to thousands and thousands and thousands of students. But 100 years is a long time. After 100 years, things break down. Despite investments and the efforts of our hard-working custodial team, things stop working. Things start breaking. Things start leaking. Start falling. And things start growing. For too long, too little has happened. We could spend a long time, I mean, let's be real, a very long time talking about the whys. And then nothing would happen for even longer. So let's talk about action here. But when we need action, we've got more than $100 million coming our way. More than $100 million. It'll mean a brand new building on the same site, the reconstruction of the castle on the hill back into a world-class facility. Finally, entering the 21st century, a traditional district public school with not one, but two brand new gyms and locker rooms. With not one, but two brand new cafeterias with new science lab where kids can actually do science, with a mock trial room where kids can prepare to be our future leaders, with hallways and classrooms that are neither too hot nor too cold, with walkways that don't flood, and with an auditorium that is safe to sit in. This will be a space that pays respect to the history of the high, while honoring what the school always set out to do, and that's prepare our kids for the future. So stay involved. We all know the history here. We know what's been promised, and we know what's been delivered. We're further along now than we've been before, but stay involved. For now, it's a good day for Camden, and it's a great day to be a Panther.
Whenever you're ready. We're back. We're back. Camden Showcase, the Clarence Turner Gymnasium for It's All About Sports Broadcast Network. Jacob Schwartz, Ron Finch, and Terry Collins joining us. Second of four games here at Camden High. It'll be Haddonfield ball as right now right Cocos Valley is. Rod will, will just say that right now right Cocos Valley also like Paulsboro has done a great job scoring at bunches. They've got Nair Campbell coming off the bench has scored seven points. He's looked very sharp here in this, in this game here today. Well, you know, at times Haddonfield showed their youth, but youthful mistakes. So they just have to tighten up a, a couple of plays. And um, they're only down three. Let's see if their zone, uh, half-court zone trap, 1-3-1 one, one zone trap could cause some turnovers. Sitting there in the first half looking at the Persia um, kind of reminds me of um, around that 95-96 era on the Chrisman brothers from oh. Oh, Joe Crispin. Joe yeah, and Joe John Crispin, Crispin. Sure. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. Wow, they were Definitely. terrific. That was a guy who, uh, uh, you know, let's let's talk about a guy like Joe. Um, Joe is now currently coaching in the South Jersey area at Rowan University. Joe brings a wealth of knowledge. Uh, a guy who who was a knockdown shooter. He was a great four-year starter or four-year player at Penn State, mm -hmm. and he has certainly continued that tradition. So Mike the Persia does. I guess if you want to if you want to compare him to a guy like Let's Joe Crispin, I guess it's a little it's interesting. It's definitely an interesting type of comparison. Right. Well, I tell you what, you better not leave him alone anywhere inside the half court. That's what they said about that. Joe Crispin, by the yeah. way. <laughs> they said that about Joe Crispin, and look how he turned out. Three pointer, no good. Attempted. That shot will not fall, but a whistle is going to See, stay on the floor. The, I problem think with this, the problem with this 1 3 1 zone is they're not getting back to get rebounds, and they're out of position. They're not boxing out. And now on Brendan Gilbart. Watch opposite! I believe that's, that's going to be first personal foul. Offensive foul! It's going the other way. It's on Dawkins. I think that was a good call. And I think it's Jay Flanagan call. not happy with that call, and I don't blame him. I, I don't, don't think I, that was a charge. I, I just think I it's Jay so and the coaches didn't it. think it. I think a lot of people are trying to. I honestly think it's so far under the basket. You don't think it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's I'm literally right the, under the basket. I don't think that was a foul. I really don't. I don't think that was offensive, in my opinion. Top shot move. again. Good for. Hyde, one half of the Hyde brothers. They need, brothers they need the Hyde to get a steal in this zone pressure because he's a trigger man up top. 20, 20, well, Dylan Hyde just uh, 20, 20, certainly muscling his way 20. in. The youth and wealth on, on Hyde. He looks like, and this guy looks like he's about 15, year, if not 14 years old. Mm. He's got a baby type face. And he's only a junior, so man, this team next year is going to be huge. Well, like you said, youth has certainly been the big part of, of this, of what we can expect out of this team. Easy call. Offensive no. foul, and that's back-to-back -back charges called on the South Jersey's Red Devil team. I agree with that one a little more than the last one. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like Jay Flanagan is arguing much because those last two charges have been, it seems like, the correct call. The Bulldogs looking to answer again here, still trailing by one. Both teams again have really uh, have not have yet to really score a big time basket. Oh man, Gil Martin was looking for the backdoor cut, could not get it. Finds his man to Persia. To Persia, back to Lewis Evans. Evans into the hands again of Hyde. Hyde goes another good backdoor pass with Gil Martin. That's intercepted. Out of bounds it goes, and I think it's going to belong again to Wright Cocos Valley. Good heads up. That's huh. a good heads up play too. Though. Two minutes gone by here in the third quarter of this thrilling Camden showcase again. We've already had one thriller. That was on the strength of a 21-point come from behind win by the Eagles of Paul VI, led by Keaton Wise. Wise was certainly the difference maker, 24 points. But the play of al Qaeda Hidalgo, what a second half again. He had 14 in the second half in route to a 21-point performance on his end, Rod. Yeah, definitely. It was a great comeback. 
This In this game, both teams are still trying to fill each other out, even though it's the third quarter. I think it could be one of those games where the fourth quarter gets really exciting. Well, it's still at least a one-point game. Yep. At least the good thing about the good thing about this game is that the, the problem is it's just lo lots limited scoring here in this third quarter. It's kind of looking like the first quarter, but the second quarter we've seen the action pick up, so... I'm actually really looking forward to the fourth because I know both teams are well, really let's up the intensity. So. Well, let's hope that changes here in the uh, when we head to the fourth quarter. Again, the Red Devils looking to get something going here. And again, the Red Devils, uh, keep in mind, this is the post-Adam Perry era. This was a guy who, again, could make, who really could get the wheels going. I mean, he was the guy that really revved the engine for head coach Jay Flanagan. Here's a pull-up jumper. That one no good. And again, struggles on both sides of the ball. Continue. Here's the Persia. He's got one man to beat, and he scores. That was a nice leak out by the Persia. high of 10 points here in this one. We already know that we already know that when he gets out, he gets out, and he gets out in front fast. Pull up jumper good. Answering right back is Kyle Sapp. Sapp with his second field goal. He's got four. Again, it's Nair Campbell leading the way, leading the charge with seven off the bench. Right Kokosali again on top. We've had about I want to say about five lead changes, and we haven't, I don't think we've had one tie that I know of. Great ball movement. Bulldogs again trying to answer back. Three-pointer again will not fall. Shabon back into the ball game. It's going to be Curtis Bright and Kanayo Akoso. Mm. So it'll be Akoso and Bright back into the ball game for Flanagan. It's been a very, again, as mentioned, very fast third quarter here as we're already at the halfway point here at the Clarence Turner Gymnasium. Nice. Home of one of the most violent programs in the entire state of New Jersey, the Camden Panthers. One of the most dominant programs. Yes, yeah, so he in 50, South Jersey, 50, 50 years of winning, man. When you have not one, but two of the all time leading scorers in South Jersey, a man and a woman. Yeah, I know. With Annie Payton and the great Dewan Wagner, that certainly says for a lot. Yes. Haddonfield again, as mentioned. Terry Collins mentioning this uh, during the uh, earlier in the game that there's a very good chance that in Group Two these two teams, Camden and Haddonfield, will likely have to meet in the South Jersey Group Two uh, Championship. And then you mentioned in scores, then you uh, you got to look at Nate Johnson. Well, you have to also look at what Camden has and what they don't. With, with Greer being gone, John Evans and Ethan Tarnay are really the two guards now that are stepping in for. Coach John Valori. Good backdoor cutting in. And this guy to Persia can do it on both ends. What happens on that pick and roll is uh, Rankhanko Valley's not having a third but guy to give a, help. But that was a perfect pass. Like that was said. a great Persia found a wide open Gil Martin. This is again what to Persia could do. He could pass it, he could shoot it, and he could defend it. He could also run the floor very, very well. That's why Team it's Speed again has taken a chance on him where he plays his AAU basketball. Right now, Haddonfield again is the eighth lead change of this one 28 to 27. Haddonfield already with 21 wins this season, Ray Cocos with 15. Or RV, that is. At least that's what they're referred to as. And another bad pass. It'll stay Ray Cocos Valley ball. And again, Ray Cocos Valley passing more than shooting. Well, they're still trying to figure the zone out, even though it's the third quarter. It is the, yes. They, 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 they're not getting the ball in the middle, so they're going side to side, and they're getting trapped, and they're taking bad shots. So that's why they're scoring this low. They have to figure out how to get the ball in the middle, and well, I think they'll have think more Jay success. Flat, but why do you think Jay Flanagan is trying to get his team to spread the floor? Well, he's tr probably trying to get them to do that, but they're probably not listening. It does, yeah, it does kind of seem that way. To Persia again, who runs this offense, and it's rare to see a talented 15-year-old player run an offense like this. And yeah. boy, does he run this offense well. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he has a shot at well. If he shoots it well, then they could get up. They could get up by at least 10 points. Well, he doesn't have to shoot with the with what he brings. Again, good ball movement by the Bulldogs. Mm. Shot won't fall again. Attempted by Gilmartin. Frank Cogasali. Gilmartin with a great attempt. What a job by Gilmartin. It'll be had field basketball. Uh, that's inexcusable. You can't you can't make that kind of mistake. Uh, Gilmartin just, again staying with the play the whole yeah, time. That was good hustle by Gilmartin. Defensive effort. And just like that. 
The Bulldogs are going to get it back here with a one-point lead. 2.21 remaining. Look at that. He's that good backdoor cut to Hyde. He delivers, and that's three in a row, or should say, that's four in a row scored by the Bulldogs. Hyde now with six. It's 30-27. to 27. Shooter, Dylan! Again, like you said, uh, Rod, this uh, Red Cocos Valley team is still trying to figure out the hat, the Bulldog uh, defense. They uh, finally they, go after the kind of, They throw one. up a couple of hero threes that went in. Lester with nine. It's a full timeout. Tied at 30 with 153 to go here at the Camden Showcase at Clarence Turner Gymnasium. At fees. Ew, really? Oh, it's our Verizon bill. Look at them. Line access fee, administrative fees, there are even taxes on top of them. Decent people shouldn't have to live like this. Did I get it? T-Mobile ends surprise fees and taxes. That's right. With T-Mobile One, taxes and fees are now included. Four lines, 40 bucks each. All unlimited, all in. Learn more at a T-Mobile store. One fifty-three left to go. The Clarence Turner Gymnasium. Jacob Schwartz, Ron Finch, Terry Collins for the It's All About Sports Broadcasting Network. Ready, for ready. more information, visit our website. It's allaboutsports.com. First win in the books. Paul the six defeats Paulsboro again. As I, I, I mentioned, I like I like what Rancacos Valley is doing. They're going to go the press to try to get easy baskets. A seventy-one to sixty-eight win by Paul the six. Right now, we've got a thriller, a, a, a tie ball game yep. between Ray Cocos Valley and Hadfield. Another Good job. bad pass Good again. Good job by the coach of changing the defense and going to a press to get his team going. I thought, I think Jay Flanagan, that was smart. I think they're going to stay in that for a while. I think that uh, Haddonfield again got a little pressured by that full court, by that trap again by the Red Devils, and that forced them to throw the ball again as mentioned out of bounds. And I think they panicked again. We better remember, this is a team that averages an age of 15 years old, so you know that eventually they're going to make these mental type of mistakes. Red Devils again, leading in. Whistles again as mentioned, silent. Jay Flanagan again, really protesting, thinking there's got to be some kind of contact. We're about a minute left to go, and nice that is block. a great block again. What a block by Darnell St. Clair. Did it without Another foul, and that was good. Big time block again by St. Clair. Here come the Red Devils with an opportunity here. And they don't have to go for a quick shot here. They can just take it down to the end of the third quarter. Tied again at 30. Don't leave him! At the end of this game. Oh, oh another poor. He had him. He just threw it too high. It was a good thought. It was a pressure, pressure type of play. Yeah. At the end of this game, fans are going to be clearing the floor. We're going to be taking an hour break before we get set to go for the 4 o'clock showdown between Camden and St. Anthony. Back into the ball game comes Ben Schroeder. Middle, middle, Dylan, middle. And if you're Haddonfield, you got to go for the last shot. Paul Wiedemann's got to call. Wiedemann has to go for that last shot here. Another bad pass again. And this time, there's going to be a whistle. It's going on Mike DePersia. And that's going to be his second. So you know the foul watch is definitely on for Mike DePersia. The sharp shooting lefty. Both teams, again, as mentioned, they were told to take the last shot, did not listen to their coach, and took very poor shots on both sides of the ball. So that was not a good possession. This Let's time, if Jay Flanagan's bunch has an opportunity here to hold the ball yep. here and get that last shot that they needed. It's one for low. Ben, Ben, Ben. Back of the hands again from the wing. Shot will not fall. Rebound again, final seconds. It won't go. That's a three-point shot, no good by Kyle Lundy, and uh, I think Haddonfield threw one up and went in. Too bad it did not count at the uh, as time runs out. Tied at 30, right Cocos Valley at Haddonfield at the Camden Showcase here at the Paul Tur or Clarence Turner Gymnasium here at Camden High. Very 
Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Spirit has over 400 vehicles to choose from and 70 trucks on the ground ready to roll today. Drive home a new 2017 Ram 1500 quad cab for as low as $149 per month. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram will get you driving today. Rates start at 0% with terms up to 84 months. For over 25 years, the Delaware Valley's smartest shoppers have been saving thousands on their new vehicle with the Spirit Saver price. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is right off I-95 at the base of the Commodore Barry Bridge. You're only minutes away. Online 24-7 at SpiritChryslerDodgeJeep.com. Spirit, we're selling excitement. Spirit. Got it, got it. It's all about Sports Broadcast Network. Welcomes you back to the Clarence Turner Gymnasium at the Camden Showcase. Paul Six has defeated Paulsboro to win their fifth consecutive game in the New Jersey State play. And Haddon Field at Rank Hogan's Valley in what has been a very, I guess you could say, Rod, a very interesting third quarter, I guess, would be the word. And would interesting be the word? Or yeah, you know what? I, I think this game's going to take more shape here in this fourth quarter. I, yeah. I think you got to come up. I think you got to come up with with with, with, with a man who, who, who has made a great show like Coast to Coast uh, Sports. I think you could come up with something a little bit different than interesting. Well, you know what it is? It's kind of raggedy, and it's just both teams are still filling each other out after three quarters. Well, I think Haddonfield might have figured out Rye Cocos Valley, but I'm starting to think Rye Cocos Valley still has it. Well, well, I don't know because now ever since uh, Coach Flanagan went to that trap. They've struggled with this, and now they found something here. Well, see if they can break it. Darnell St. Clair taking advantage on that one. As again, now Rancocas Valley seems to trap a little bit more. Here's an opportunity. Coast to coast. Shot is good for Asa Daniels. We haven't seen much of Asa Daniels. In fact, that's the first But you know what? Now that they're in a transition game, you're going to see more of them because that's probably more of his game. Well, Look that this. experience is continuing to hurt this Hadfield team. Another bad pass by the Bulldogs. Here come the Red Devils. And I'll tell you what, Coach Paul Weedman better think about calling a timeout, maybe to stop the bleeding. Yeah, to, to adjust to this trap. They're it's a 4-0 to... run again, as mentioned by the Red Devils. Camden and St. Anthony are coming up next. Two of the most prestigious programs in this north-south New Jersey-type battle. We're hoping that this will not be the last time we ever see St. Anthony basketball. Mm. We'll get to we'll get to why that is before the start of our next I game. Again, I we'll be steal. on the air, hopefully before 4 o'clock, to talk about that matchup. As uh, St. Anthony, like it or not, they are still in existence. We'll again talk about how much they still need to keep their doors open. In the meantime, though, the Bulldogs looking to get something here. That trap again continuing to hurt the Bulldogs. Here is Asa Daniels move. gets the end one. What wow. a play by Daniels. And again, that 2-3 trap again in the corner. The Devils again continue Fouls to deliver, like you said, this transition has continued to work as Jay Flanagan has trapped Paul Wiedelman's bunch in that's the corner. So far, that's the biggest adjustment of the game when he went to this oh, trap. Good. To change the pace of the game, and now they're kind of like they're they're in their their comfort zone right now. And I told well, you that fourth quarter would pick up the intensity. So now it's had well, Daniels says again, four points four in a row again for Daniels. Good pass. Good pass inside again. Score the basket of the foul for Gilmartin, and once again another backdoor cut, and the Bulldogs again continue to deliver down low. Gil he's good in the post. He's crafty around the basket, and I think they're going to continue to go to him. And he, he baited him into that mm -hmm. foul, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Personal foul is going to be called. It looks like on Nair Campbell, I believe. That's the second on him. Gil Martin to the line, and he misses. Just four points again, as mentioned, for Gil Martin. Ooh, he could have got that steal. He's close. Red Devils, again, as mentioned, who have done it well here in the second half with that trap defense, the double trap. But they're still struggling from the offensive front, though. It seems they're only really able to score points off of transition. They've done it here with six of them here in the second half alone, Rod. Yep. 
The ball moving again, a success, the three-pointer good again. Score that one to Bond, back-to-back threes for Bond. Actually, that's the first three since late in the first quarter for Bond. We haven't seen a whole lot of Will Bond here in this game. But nevertheless, Haddonfield again has the one point, or should say trails by one. They have yet to go into the middle of this zone. The whole game kind of swinging around. It does seem like And Haddonfield's Rankos. used to that, so they're playing for Re Rancocos Valley to throw the ball in on the corner and getting trapped in the corner. They Absolutely. have to go in the middle if they're going to have success. Most definitely. And that's exactly what Rancocos Valley has been able to do is beat them right in the middle. Now you'll notice again the 2-3 trap by this uh, Haddonfield team by the Bulldogs. Three minutes gone by here in regulation. Another one-point game here at the Camden Showcase here at Camden High at the Clarence Turner Gymnasium. By the way, I should point out that this court is also named the Dewan Wagner Court, named after South Jersey's all-time league scorer, the great Dewan Wagner. See, they finally got the steal out of that trap. Right now, Haddon Township, or should say Haddon Field High, not Haddon Township. Remember, there are two Haddonfield teams. We don't want to get them, them mixed up. They played at our It's All About Sports uh, turn, uh, showcase, I believe, at Pemberton High School uh, earlier this season. And actually, you got Haddon Heights, you got Haddonfield, and Haddon Township. Yes, we do. We have about three or four Haddonfield teams. Right. But this is just plain old Haddonfield High, Terry Collins. Nice. Again, Gilmartin continues with that backdoor cut, and he continues to deliver. Mike DePersia now with 12. What a job by Brendan you, Gilmartin. You know what it is? Their bigs are good passers, the and that helps. notice that this is like watching a younger version of the Princeton, Princeton offense? Princeton, good point. Good because point. I think everybody, and I think you of all people, Ron Fitch, being that you live in the New Jersey area, would understand. We have a timeout on the floor with 344 left to go. It's a 30-second timeout. Are we staying on the air? Are we staying? Before we go to commercial. We're, we are staying on again, as mentioned here. Gentlemen, and Cam uh, we welcome you back to the Camden Showcase for It's All About Sports Broadcasting Network. Don't forget our final It's All About Sports Broadcasting Network event of the season will be at Dell Castle High School in Wilmington, Delaware. Mm. That's coming up again, as mentioned, on Monday. But let's talk about again. Uh, Paul the Sixth, 21 point, uh, come from behind win. Rancocas Valley Haddonfield. It seems like Rancocas Valley has adjusted after a slow start in the first quarter. And the 2-3 trap again has continued to pay off. And that's how they're, again, scoring these baskets because of these traps. What do they need to do on the offensive front? Well, first of all, defensively, they have to take away the back door for Haddonfield. And offensively, they just have to go to the middle. Uh, that looked like a travel. Gilmart may have gotten away with a travel on that as uh, Rancocas Valley fans and Coach Jay Flanagan not happy. And again, Gilmartin may have gotten away with another travel. That leaves open again. Shot won't fall for Will Bond. I think the ball doesn't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to. <laughs> I, don't, I don't recommend holding on the ball. You had one angry coach that, that shot That should be this last win. foul is going to make it a one-on-one -on -one situation. Now, now, you know, it's a so three, three fouls contest. again on Will Bond, and now here come the Red Devils with an opportunity to take the lead for the fourth time here today. And again, this is going to be crucial because we've seen in that last game where Paulsburg lost that game, and we totally forgot about how many foul shots they missed mm -hmm. in that fourth quarter. Well, foul so. shooting definitely, like you said, definitely hurt uh, this uh, Paulsboro team, especially with Eric Diaz, who really was – in the first half, almost unstoppable, and then the second half, it seemed like everything he took just he he could just couldn't get the best. It's even airballed a foul shot, like you said. Right. Well, Rancocas Valley's not going to be doing that one as Javon Laster with that last basket. Now with uh, I believe 11 for Laster. So 11 for Javon Laster, and he is the high man again, as mentioned, for the Red Devils. And we have a timeout. Timeout called by the Haddon Township team. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. Now, next week, uh, come South Jersey uh, tournament time, the group four, Rancocas Valley is actually going to be playing Williamstown in the first round. Uh, that should be a very good matchup, by and the way. Luckily, the prize for them will probably be a Shawnee team. So, oh. And Shawnee <laughs> always brings the uh, energy, always a good type of guard type play. Let's talk about the final event 
of the season for the It's All About Sports uh, Showcase. That would be the President's Day uh, Classic. And we will have North Carolina Prep. The last time we saw them at Wander University, North Carolina Prep, what a show they put on. A young lady, and I, we don't remember her name off the top of our head, put in 35 points mm. in a game. They'll take on, again, Paul the Sixth. St. Thomas Moore will take on Lindenwald at 130. At 3, it'll be Parkway Center City at Howard High School. And West Hampton takes on Del Castle. That's all part of the President's Day shootout. And if you have any questions, our website again is itsallaboutsports.com for more information. Coming up next, after an hour break, we'll get set to go with North versus South. St. Anthony taking on Camden. Offensive house should be called. It is not. So I, it is why? not. Dylan you know Hyde. I, I agree with this because he I'd undercut like to know him. Why. He undercut him, and he got there just about a half a second late. So I thought that was actually but Dylan good. Hyde lead in, and I think if I'm right, Cocos Valley, I got to be looking for. Well, the I only be, the I only reason I disagree with you because the fact that he had he didn't have position yet. He slid under the big uh, hind, and he didn't establish his position yet. Now so I thought that was and you actually. Think he established. I think, he, I think they got it right on this one. We're tied at 38 for just the second time here today. Into the ball game comes Lou Evans. Dylan High now with seven points. Again, Mike DePersia leading the way with 12. Hmm. One of two for Dylan Hyde. Here we go again. With but the, the Bulldogs with another opportunity here with 2.36 to go. Red Devils again struggling on second chance opportunities. Here's their man to Persia. And another timeout called. This time it's going to be a full, and we're going to take another break. 2.25 to go. Tied at 38 apiece in the Camden Showcase, the Clarence Turner Gymnasium for It's All About Sports Broadcast Network. Oh, look, we've got fees. Ew, really? Oh, it's our Verizon bill. Look at them. Line access fee, administrative fees, there are even taxes on top of them. Decent people shouldn't have to live like this. Did I get it? T-Mobile ends surprise fees and taxes. That's right. With T-Mobile One, taxes and fees are now included. Four lines, 40 bucks each. All unlimited, all in. Learn more at a T-Mobile store. Two twenty-five left to go at the Clarence Turner Gymnasium. Another classic here at Camden High School. The Camden Showcase, Jacob Schwartz, Rod Fitch, Jerry Collins joining us. And as Wright Cocos Valley and Haddonfield battling in a 38 all tie. Mike DePerger leading the way with 12 points. And for Wright Cocos Valley, 11 for Javon Laster. This has certainly been like the first game, a battle of runs and momentum. That's what the stars do. That's what the stars do. They hit the big shot. Because Mike DePersia can create, and he did just that. That is the 15th point of the game for DePersia. And I just mentioned earlier, you cannot afford to leave him open, especially not at this point in the game. Not at this point in the game. Well, that was just a good example of why Jay Flanagan's team has got to come out and do a better job defensively. They've got to come out and cover DePersia. They've got to, as they say, head. Even if they, even again, if they get screened, they have to find a way to hedge. Yes. So the Red Devils again trailing by three. Again, continue to move the ball well. Another bad turnover again to fight for the ball, but this is going to be a jump. That's the first time they actually went in the middle. And, uh, and they had an open look. And so just it's going to be right, Cocos Valley. And they should be very fortunate with this jump mm -hmm. ball. Another bad pass again, down yeah. low. Mm -hmm. He had a great idea, but the pass wasn't yeah. strong enough. Yeah, the pass was strong enough. Yep. Lewis Evans back into the ball game for Haddonfield. Luckily, they get it back. Haddonfield, or I should say right, Cocos Valley, does not need a three here. And I'm not sure about that one, but a big offensive mm -hmm. rebound again. As mentioned. Well, I think the coaches are calling for a three-point shot if they have that open look. Trap again, as mentioned, is on here. The Red Devils looking to get something here. And again, Shooter. They're gonna go, I think they're going for the three here. They're, yeah, they're sick, drawing the a play. They're trying to go for the three. They're trying to tie this game up. Shot Smart. Go. Big Smart. basket again. Get the two. And a quick basket again by Darnell St. Clair. He's got five. All right, 108 left to go, gentlemen. Yeah, this is going to be a full timeout, but I think we should stay on the air here. Let's talk about this next possession again. Haddonfield again, leading by one. It's been a back-and-forth type of battle. 
Mike DePersia has been almost untouchable, as mentioned, with a 15-point performance. I say you use him as a decoy in this next I'll tell you what. Ha- I'll tell you what Rack Hackers value should. They should press the heck out of uh, well, Hackfield and make sure. Oh, I mean, I didn't want to go no, too I know far. Hack. <laughs> I thought I that was kind of I thought that was kind of PC, but they should really press them because it's worked and make sure that you don't get the, the star player the ball in his hand because he'll make the free throws. But you press them and try to get a steal because you've been harassing them all game long. This is when you put your best press on to try to get a steal and get an easy basket. And well, I, I definitely. And Terry, go ahead. What were you saying? I was going to uh, say, uh, as we've seen earlier, with the, as Ron mentioned, the passing from the big men, don't be surprised if they catch them sleeping with a back door maybe. Yep. Well, my thing is this, this. On a possession like this, with you do want to maybe try to avoid going to the Persian, maybe use him as a decoy here. I say you try to use Gilmartin again and try to go with a backdoor type of cut. Gilmartin has done such a great job doing the backdoor cut. Again, I feel like Hadfield has played by Princeton. Another steal again. Here come the Red Devils. Foul from behind again. And we'll have two shots. Hadfield again is already in the penalty, so we're going to be shooting regardless. That was a good trap. They Rag- did their Kodis job. Rack Valley again needed a big break, and they got just the thing they were looking for. Two shots coming up with 52.5 to go. And again, just like we saw in Paul the Six, oh, Paulsboro, Rod, this is coming down to foul shooting again. Yep. It looks like Gil Martin was setting up maybe for a backdoor, too. And they saw it coming. And they stole well, it. I, don't, yep. I don't support Gil Martin's pass in any type of way. But I do support the foul shot coming up, and that one no good for Nadir Campbell. We haven't seen a whole lot of Nadir Campbell here in the second half. In fact, he was the leading scorer off the bench in the first half of play. This to at least tie it for the third time here tonight. Hmm. He cannot do it. Persia gets it back. Two big misses again. And once again, like they said, coming down to foul shooting again. Campbell with two big misses. And again, Wiedemann, another interception again. Red Devils with an opportunity. Flanagan maybe want to think about calling a timeout here. Good set play. play. Yeah. Almost intercepted well, again. Right. And it is. Timeout, Haddonfield. Yeah, you got to call a timeout there right away. Haddonfield to get a had to play. call a timeout right. here with 30.1 again left right, to go. Right, Valley, yeah. Full timeout again. It's 41 to 40 in favor of Haddonfield when we return right after this. Truck Month, it's Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Spirit has over 400 vehicles to choose from and 70 trucks on the ground ready to roll today. Drive home a new 2017 Ram 1500 quad cab for as low as $149 per month. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram will get you driving today. Rates start at 0% with terms up to 84 months. For over 25 years, the Delaware Valley smartest shoppers have been saving thousands on their new vehicle with the Spirit Saver price. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is right off I-95 and the base of the Commodore Barry Bridge. You're only minutes away. Online 24-7 at SpiritChryslerDodgeJeep.com. Spirit, we're selling excitement. Spirit. Claire Turner Gymnasium again. And Ron Finch, you mentioned this just moments ago as Haddonfield again on top 41 mm. to 40. Do you go to Mike DePersia here and maybe yes. steal the deal? I-, I want him with the ball. Well. It's too late now, but you know he's he's a pretty good free throw shooter too. So, so. Ranko Valley with that last foul, that was their again as mentioned their foul to give here. So now I think Ranko Valley, if they can't steal, they've got a foul here. Yep. Yep. This is why you need 24 second or 30 mm-hmm. second shot clocks like you do in New York City. And I think Depersia's out of bounds. Out now, a whistle was blown. I think Depersia's out of bounds. What's the call? Somebody make and the now call. And now we'll try fans trying to figure out about the call. A whistle again, as mentioned, was blown. And now the refs have got to meet up. This has to be right, Cocos Valley Ball. I think Mike DePersia, from where we were sitting, Ron, I think he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, if he stepped out of bounds, then you have to call it Rancacos Valley Ball. But and they, they will not be changing this. It will be Hadfield I, Ball. I think this was a critical miss call again by the official. Has flipped his lead. That's what I'm saying. Me too. And now both coaches have been called. Oh, he says inadvertent whistle. And, co- and okay. both coaches again have been called together. But I have to agree with the I have to agree with the right Cocos Valley coaches. It should be right Cocos Valley ball. What you know as is bad is an inadvertent whistle Mike as De- he was falling out of bounds. Well, Mike to Persia, in my opinion, Mike to Persia fell out of bounds on his own. It yeah. should be right Cocos Valley basketball. 
And now, Haddonfield again is going to have the basketball back with 19.8 to go. This has been a very, very questionable call and a quick foul right away. And we're going to be shooting one and one here. Fouls on number 21. Back into the ball game again comes Lewis Evans, but again another questionable call down the stretch run against Ryan Cocos Valley. I think that Mike DePurge is out of bounds. This should be Ryan Cocos Valley. Yeah. And now you've got your best foul shooter on the line in Mike DePurge. Opportunity to make this a three-point game, and this is a guy you do not foul. No, you don't. And you hate to see games like this so good throughout come down to a call like I this. I know. And that's why he brings the speed. And team but if, speed if you're Ryan Kelko Valley, you got to hit a three and try to tie the game up. You can't. You can't think about that now. Well, 17 for Mike to Persia. Final seconds again here in this classic again. Haddonfield and Ryan Cocos Valley in game two. That one almost taken away again. Final 10 seconds to go. Right, Cocos Valley in need of a three. Final six seconds for the tie. No. Rebound again. Right, Cocos Valley with an opportunity again. No. The miss by number 11, Katie on Dawkins. Not once but twice do the Red Devils have an opportunity to tie. And for the second time today, this a game ends at the buzzer as Haddonfield Bulldogs survive and go to 22-4 and four on the season with a 43 to 40 win over Ray Cocos Valley. Our player of the game of our It's All About Sports Broadcast Network player of the game, Mike DePersia, finishing with a 17 point performance. He was the only player in double figures. And for Ray Cocos Valley, they were led by Javon Laster with 11 points. For Ron Finch, and for, I should, I, I should say, and for Terry Collins. This is Jacob Schwartz from the Camden Showcase here at the Clarence Turner Gymnasium at Camden High School. Thank you for watching again the It's All About Sports presentation of the Camden Showcase coming up next. Camden and St. Anthony will take a little bit of a break back with the Camden St. Anthony North and South battle Ooh, here really? at Camden High. Oh, it's our Verizon bill. Look at them. Line access fee, administrative fees, there are even taxes on top of them. Decent people shouldn't have to live like this. Did I get it? T-Mobile ends surprise fees and taxes. That's right. With T-Mobile One, taxes and fees are now included. Four lines, 40 bucks each. All unlimited, all in. Learn more at a T-Mobile store. It's Ram Truck Month at Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Spirit has over 400 vehicles to choose from and 70 trucks on the ground ready to roll today. Drive home a new 2017 Ram 1500 quad cab for as low as $149 per month. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram will get you driving today. Rates start at 0% with terms up to 84 months. For over 25 years, the Delaware Valley's smartest shoppers have been saving thousands on their new vehicle with the Spirit Saver price. Spirit Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is right off I-95 at the base of the Commodore Barry Bridge. You're only minutes away. Online 24-7 at SpiritChryslerDodgeJeep.com. Spirit, we're selling excitement.